from right to left. Is that that's that's the point of the Democratic Party, right? So we'll go from right to left, and uh, I just kind of want to hear your take on uh, what happened, uh, what is uh, significant about this change, and perhaps uh, uh, for the Democratic Party's sake, how uh, that change gets reversed. And I have to say that um, November second was one of the the worst nights. I can honestly remember. I mean, I kept getting text message after text message, uh, such and such lost, and then my, my good friend uh, James Fields lost, and I figured once he lost, I figured the rest of the state was gone, and again, and it happened. It just kept happening over and over again until about nine o'clock, and I figured there were no Democrats left. I was looking around to see if I had any friends left. I think we were going to lose ground, but I don't think any of us had, had any idea how much ground we were going to lose. It took me about a week to recover, and. Um, but I actually think it's one of the best things that ever happened to us. Um, I have an unusual relationship with the Democratic Party, as most of y'all know. Um, when they almost took my nomination away from me five years ago. So I'm not exactly always a party loyalist, I want to say. Um, and I think we were a party of mediocrity. We weren't standing for anything. Um, we were, had been in control for over 100 years and what had we really accomplished for the people of Alabama. We still have a poor education system. Um, we still have a high poverty rate, which is something I work on every day. And I think it's time for the party to retool. Um, we need new leadership. We need people who aren't afraid to take on the issues that the Democratic Party cares about. And I hope every one of them reads the national platform because that's what we as a party agreed to stand on. I was part of that platform uh, committee, proud to do it. And I find a lot of Democrats in Alabama, particularly in the legislature, um, don't necessarily agree with most of those issues. And as my good friend who's sitting in the audience told me once after the election, said, well, what did the Democrats do for you in your first term? Nothing. <laughs> what did you really lose then overnight? You know, you have a new opportunity. And I think this party's got to look hard and long at what we stand for and how to communicate it and, um, and not try to out-Republican the Republicans, which is typically what we try to do. I, I totally agree with, with Pat. Um, I guess we could say calling all Democrats. And that means all Democrats. Um, to sum it up, and I'm like Pat, I'm not totally disappointed. Because sometimes we need a wake-up call. We have become complacent. We have become divided. Uh, we did not have a central focus of who we were, the same principles that brought us the same things that we had done. We no longer stuck to that agenda. We became more reactionary to what they were doing. So sometimes change is good. Because now we do have an opportunity to rebuild. Now we do have an opportunity to refocus and determine who we are and what our message is. The Democratic Party has always been a part of the people. The focus came up with that contract with the people. Well, that contract with the people is cutting jobs, cutting health care, turning back the clock, and those same people who voted for them or began to see that in a very, very short time. They didn't waste any time. What I truly would like to see before we, as elected people, refocus is to get in touch with our people to find out where we want to go as a Democratic Party. Because we are not there representing ourselves. We are there representing the constituents, you. And from the grassroots up, we need to be building this party. We need to be here for people everywhere. Somewhere, somewhere along the line, we really kind of lost touch with our people. So we can't forget that. We can't leave our people behind because if we leave our folks behind, they're going to leave us. And part of that is the reason why we did lose. We have to be true to ourselves and who we are. Because young people are watching us. They don't go for this stuff. I mean, you know, and they feel that we are very disingenuous about the way we do things. So we are going to have to be fair because if you are looking at a young person aspiring to run for an office or get involved, they see right away through all the, you know, minutiae that we give them. They have to go for it. And one thing we, we haven't discussed, and I think it's something that, that this election brought to the forefront, that we're going to have to deal with the racial problem at some point. Because uh, 
Whether we know it or not, it's eating away at the core of the party. So I, I do agree with Chris that we do have to address the issue of, of racism. Alabama, in a lot of ways, is still functioning in 1960 mentality. And the people in this room care about all people, black, white, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Um, that's why we're Democrat. I mean, I think it's got to be a, a, a coalition of people, black and white, who want to um, have a serious discussion um, about what's going on in our state. I mean, I am so sick of people blaming President Obama for this loss. No, it's not yeah. President Obama's fault. No. You know, I am. I am. And when people ask me, I, I am an Obama Democrat. <laughs> I am proud. <laughs> Minority. <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, if, if we want to revamp, I still say this is a good thing. We have time to rebuild, or we have an opportunity to rebuild. As I said, we can be better. We need a platform, we need to offer an alternative to uh, Republicans in the state of Alabama. We don't do that currently. Uh, I may divide the room here, and I, I, I don't really, I really don't care. But um, racism is a generational curse. And I'll say that because um, if you are the massive body of our members of the legislature, they are, especially the Democratic Party, are an average of maybe 50 to 60 years of age. They don't work, they're retired, or they're self-employed, or something of that sort. Um, and they're Democrats only when it's required, to, and only when they're required to be. Um, we've had a number of conversations with Democrats as we tried to create a statewide platform and these, the older gentlemen, and I say gentlemen because I don't know how many, we're not very diverse in any regard in the legislature, but uh, these older gentlemen would tell us that I know my district and I don't need you in my district. Mm -hmm. And see, the, the underlying, you know, honestly, the, the overtone there was I'm from there, so I know my people, but the undertone was that if they saw you representing me or you supporting me, I would lose both. When we start debating our, our, our health care policy, it becomes a black issue. And, you know, they look to the, because, again, the people are so, some of our Democrats are so concerned about having a message to sell to their constituency, they don't care about how that message sounds. They don't care if that message is intellectually honest. So, as the Democratic Party, we can't recruit our younger generation who didn't grow up in this generational racism to be involved in politics that is that dwells on it, that lives and breathes off of, off of it. So again, our honest dialogue has to be, are you really a Democrat? And if you're really a Democrat, this is our platform. You can't be a Democrat in Montgomery and then go home and create a party <laughs> of whatever independence you feel like that day when you go back to your so district. Why would you win as a Democrat? You know that you can win. You've already won the seat, and then you switch over. But my thing is, good riddance. I would rather have five good Democrats, five good Democrats, than 200 of those, you know, pretenders fly on the walls, get all the information, take them back to the other side. If we're going to be Democrats, we need to be Democrats. Give me five good Democrats. That's what you know, we were always known as the party of the people. And I think we need to get back to addressing those needs. We need to begin to talk about true tax fairness um, and reducing the burden on our poor citizens. Furthermore, I think we need to start talking about protecting our fundamental rights and evolving the argument from civil rights to human rights. And last but not least, uh, uh, we, as, as Pat said, we are, uh, we need to find a way to create as many jobs outside of state government. We, you know, we've got to be willing to stand up on the issues that we care about and not be afraid. That, you know, we may be a minority, but we're right. We're not going to have any Democrats for the future. If we don't start teaching them about the principles of the Democratic Party and what we stand for, then we are really going to be in jeopardy because everybody's doing their own thing out there and, you know, it's everybody for self.